So before we actually get into today's video, I want to talk to you guys about JerseyFIFA.com because, as you can see, they have hooked me up with a load of fresh shirts for this year's World Cup. I've got the England home kit, the England away kit, and also a nice little retro shirt. And you can do exactly the same if you head to JerseyFIFA.com using the link in the description down below. They also do the same for club football as well. The latest home shirts, away shirts, but also some really nice retro kits. If you are interested, head to the link in the description down below and use code JerseyFIFA for a discount when you order. Now into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where again, World Cup match coverage. We are here talking about Portugal's 2-0 win over Uruguay. A 2-0 win which I felt was deserved. I thought Portugal were the better team. Although, it wasn't exactly massively one-sided. It was a bit of a weird game. It wasn't the most interesting game in the world. It probably planned out pretty much, probably um, panned out, sorry, exactly how we were expecting it to. Before the match, I was looking at it going, this is going to be a little bit scrappy, uh, quite an intense game, perhaps a lack of quality at times, and it's going to be won in certain individual moments. And I think that was largely right. Apart from the fact that I don't even know that it actually had the greatest intensity. I thought that Uruguay in particular were really disappointing. But let's look at some of the things from a tactical point of view. So, as we would expect, Portugal being the better team, they were the team that looked to try and take control of the ball, and they ended the game with around 60% possession, which is decent at this level. Um, but I felt that Uruguay could have done so much more to stop them. So in terms of the system, I think there is an issue that we can see from the lineup. Because you're playing with three centre-backs, which I do understand because you're playing against a front two, it just made it hard for them to match up in other areas of the pitch. Because Bentancur... This is when Portugal had the ball, sorry. So Bentancur is on Bruno Fernandes, Valverde on Carvalho, and then Vicino on Bernardo here, for, for example. This is how it could play out. Typically in this system, you would then ask the wingbacks to push really high onto the Portugal fullbacks. But the problem you have here is it leaves Costa, Diaz, Pepe, and Neves four versus two against uh, Darwin Nunes and Cavani, which is a real issue for Uruguay because it makes it so much harder for them to press. Now, one way that you can deal with this is when the centre-back gets the ball, the near striker goes onto him, and the other striker fills him. And then when it goes across, you do this. And that is one way that you can press in that way. But I just didn't think that Edison Cavani played with the intensity that was needed to do that. Is it a case of just his age? Is it not sharp? Is it a tactical thing? Was it a lack of effort? I'm not too sure. But I just thought it was really easy for Portugal. And what you're going to see is that this probably ends up being a slightly shorter video than normal. Because it wasn't massively impressive from a tactical point of view or even individual performances point of view. I just thought Uruguay were off it and Portugal took advantage of that. And like I said, some of that came from Neves' ability to get on the ball. Neves is a very technical footballer. Is he the most mobile? No, but he is very technically good and can control the tempo of a game from this deep position. With his passing through the lines, but also his long passing, but also some of his safer short passing as well. Another area where Portugal had a good amount of success was in the wide areas, where, to put it simply, they had the better players. Varela and Oliveira are decent, but Nuno Mendes and Cancelo are a lot better. And I thought Nuno Mendes in particular started the game really, really well, getting forward down this side, providing the width. Unfortunately, he went off injured. Really, really disappointed for him. I thought this could be a tournament for him to kick on. Of course, missed that first game. His reaction when he came off, it looks like his tournament is probably over, so that's bad news. But Guerrero came on, and it was kind of more of the same. And that is what Portugal wanted to do push their fullbacks quite high up the pitch, like so. And it forced Uruguay back, defending in this 5-3-2. And again, we can just see that Portugal have the extra man in the midfield. I don't think that Uruguay was set up correctly. I think the formation set them up for failure a little bit. As a result of this quite easy way of playing out from the back, but also the fact that they were dominating the wide areas, Portugal really quite easily took control of this game. And what they then had to do was move to more of a double pivot, with Neves and Carvalho playing alongside each other. And then Bernardo and uh, Bruno Fernandes were given relative freedom in the final third. And... This is where, again, it's decent, it's a, it's a good tactical setup, but I feel like there's more that you can get from this Portugal team, and I'm just not sure that Fernando Santos does that. So I've been saying about the Uruguay manager not getting the best out of his team, Diego Alonso, but I also think Fernando Santos can get more from this Portugal team. Because what it seems like was the plan was to play with the two centre-backs here, and then the double pivot in front of them, and then the uh, full-backs play reasonably high, provide the width, it then felt like this front four, and this might be wrong, it feels like they aren't given a ton of tactical instruction when you watch them. Now, I'm sure they are, but if you watch them play, there's no real clear patterns of play that develop, there's no clear structure, certain runs off the ball to drag players into different areas, a lack of manipulation of the opposition. It just feels like Portugal and Santos, who we know is cautious, he is pragmatic, it feels like he's set up on having this solid base, and then the forward players are kind of given 
just go try create something for us. And it's made harder for them by the fact that they're all really narrow. Now what this does allow them to do, and again this shows that cautious side, it allows them to control possession because they have the extra numbers in the middle of the park so they can control the ball. However, when you are getting players so close to each other, like this, Felix, Bernardo, Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes, you are relying on quick two-touch football. Now what that does mean, when you do have quality players, which Portugal do, there are times when that will absolutely work. Of course it will. Bruno Fernandes will pop a pass in, Bernardo will drop a shoulder player around the corner, Felix will run in on goal, square it to Ronaldo. They'll, they'll probably score a really good goal at some point during the tournament with this quick football, because they do have some really capable players. However, the problem is, when you are relying on such speed, the accuracy really has to be on it. And if one of the players isn't quite on their best or quite at their best that day, it leaves Portugal really lacking. In terms of from wide areas, I just didn't think there was enough delivery into the box despite controlling these wide areas. I think they could have done more. Cancelo still seems to be struggling with the system, but I think it's because they need wingers. I was saying it in the first game and they looked so much better when they got wingers on the pitch. Get a Rafa Leal on the pitch. I think it just changes the Portugal team entirely. So... In terms of this video is titled How Portugal Beat Uruguay, I think they beat Uruguay because they weren't very good. I do have concerns moving forward for Portugal, but Santos, he's getting enough out of this team. Like I said, if you're a Portugal fan, you're probably not particularly enjoying this video. You probably want me to be really positive, talking about a 2-0 win against a stubborn side, which I'll talk about that in a second. I'll come on to it, but I just think on this channel, what I want to do is talk about just because a team won, it doesn't necessarily mean they're brilliant. A team can win 4-0 and not actually be that impressive. Things just go their way in certain moments of the game. I just don't think Uruguay are very good. Now, yes, Portugal do deserve credit. You can only beat what's in front of them, and they got the job done. But in terms of what I do on this channel is break things down tactically. Tactically, looking at the attacking setup of this Portugal team, I think they're going to struggle against better teams. I think if we look at things from a defensive point of view as well, let me set this up really quick. Um, even the way they press is decent for when you're playing these mid-level mid teams, like a team like Uruguay. But I think when you're playing top quality, again, I think you're going to struggle. So they're pressing kind of a 4-2-3-1 like this, or a 4-4-1-1 if you like, with Bruno Fernandes and João Felix, the wider players, perfectly fine setup. Normally what happens in this sort of situation is the wingers, whether it's a back four you're playing against or a back three, the wingers take up this position between the centre-back and the wing-back, or the centre-back and the full-back, so that they're kind of cutting off two passes. So you're kind of cutting off this wider pass but you're also cutting off the narrower pass to the centre back by positioning yourself in between the two of them. Portugal don't do that. It's more 4-4-1-1 that is slightly flatter, again it's slightly more cautious. They're not really trying to press you high up the pitch and what it means is they're kind of pressing but again against better teams who have more technical quality in these deeper areas they are going to hurt you. I think Uruguay could have made quite a simple change to hurt them. Put Benton Kerr slightly higher up the pitch play a natural six, a ball playing six at the heart of the midfield, I think that would have given Uruguay that better technical ability to take advantage of this reasonably average press from Portugal. Like I said, it's a shorter video than what we've been seeing at the World Cup just because I don't think it was a great game. I doubt anyone really disagrees. But what Portugal do have is they've got a manager who is going to keep them reasonably defensively solid. I don't see anyone putting several goals past, uh, like too many goals past them. I know they conceded two in the first game. I think that was a bit of an anomaly, and I don't think Santos will let it happen again. So they will be solid, which is going to keep them in games. Staying in games in tournament football is the most important thing, especially when you do then have individual quality. We saw it from Bruno Fernandes in this game. We know they've got Ronaldo, Xao Felix, Rafa Leal from the bench. Bernardo Silva is a wonderful, wonderful footballer. Even players like Xao Cancelo can produce a moment of magic. So... Portugal can, st I still think Portugal can go all the way and win this tournament, but I just think these attacking players are really going to have to be on it. Lucky for them, Bruno Fernandes was in this game, and he was absolutely brilliant. Now, was it his goal? Not sure. Was it his or Ronaldo's? Not too sure. I don't really care. And was it a penalty? In my opinion, I don't think it is, but I can see why it was given. For me, I think it is a natural position for your arm to be in when you're sliding, but people will disagree. That's completely fine. Yeah, that's all I have to say on this video. Like I said, this isn't a massively in-depth tactical breakdown just because I think it didn't need to be. Portugal didn't need to be tactically that brilliant because the setup from Uruguay was rather poor. And then Portugal keep it tight, wear teams down by just overloading the middle of the pitch, showing that quality with the passing, with players like Bernardo Silva and Bruno Fernandes. It kind of wears teams down, they've got that solid approach, and then they have those moments of quality in the final third. So that's really all I have to say for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry it has been a bit of a shorter one, but I just didn't have so much to say on this one. 
Hope you have enjoyed it still, and I'll see you in the next one.